Welcome to our lecture online. Now answer the big question, why do we need four satellites for GPS? You would think that three satellites should be enough because that's all you need to find a position anywhere in 3D space. But we need a fourth satellite because we need to deal with the clock error. Now the key to doing that is to realize that the clock error, the receiver clock error, is the same for every pseudo range measurement to the four satellites. So since that's the same, we can assume that we can say that the error in the clock times the speed of light will give us that distance error, and this quantity will be the same for every one of the four measurements to the four satellites. In addition to that, you have, of course, the position errors of the satellites, so not the position errors, but you need to know the position of each of the satellites, which, needs, which means you need to know the X, Y, and Z for every one of the four satellites and the time. So there's essentially four unknowns, and in order to solve four unknowns, you need four equations. In order to come up with four equations, the four distance measurements, you're going to need four satellites. So in order to figure out where you are, a minimum required is four satellites. And so we need to therefore uh, what we call compensate for the receiver's oscillator clock drift. Now, notice that in each case, for the first measurement, you have the x, the y, and the z positions of the satellite. So that's you have a position for the satellite and the unknown clock drift. And now for the second measurement, you have the x, y, and z of the second satellite and the clock drift. You have the x, y, and z of the third satellite and the clock drift and the X, Y, and Z of the fourth satellite and the clock drift. Now notice, we know what those are because we get those from the orbital parameters, which means that the only unknown we have is the X, Y, and Z of the receiver, and that becomes then the unknown. So we know the position of the satellites because we have very accurate and up-to-date orbital parameters. So once we know the position of the satellite at a particular moment in time, then we end up with the unknown of the receiver, the x, the y, and the z. And notice they're the same for all four equations, which means we have the unknowns, x, y, and z of the receiver, and we have the unknown of the clock drift. Four unknowns, four equations, we are now able to come up with a solution. And so therefore, we we're going to come up with a much more accurate measurement for the distance between the receiver and the four satellites. So that's how we take the pseudo ranges and then convert them into more accurate ranges by compensating for the clock drift, for the clock error. So there you go again. We need X, Y, and Z. First, we need to know where the satellites are, but we get that information from the orbital parameters. Otherwise, we'd really be stuck. We'd have a whole bunch of unknowns and we couldn't solve the problem at all. So we can rely on knowing the X, the Y, and the Z positions of the, of the four satellites. So that means we only have to look for the unknown X, Y, and Z for the receiver position, which is the same, of course, for all four measurements. And we need to know the change or the delta in the time, the clock drift. Four unknowns, four equations. Now it becomes an algebra problem. Of course, it's a sticky algebra problem. And of course, we need to work that out. That's why we have computers to figure out how to come up with those accurate measurements to the four satellites. And again, that is why you need four satellites in the first place.